chances are you're playing Animal Crossing New Horizons. And if you're not, well, I wish you the best of luck with this quarantine. But not everybody plays the same way. Tom Nook has seen all kinds of island representatives over the past few months, so now it's time for you to meet them. These are the players you meet in Animal Crossing New Horizons. The Bellionaire is one of the most common types of players you'll come across, and chances are you'll meet them in a queue waiting to sell your turnips for 500 plus spells. They're probably wearing the royal crown. What does the Bellionaire do with their millions? Well, probably nothing. They just like watching that number on their bank account grow higher and higher. When they're not swimming in piles of bells like Scrooge McDuck, they're probably collecting all of the gold DIY recipes so they can fully trick out their homes. But you can't furnish a home with gold bricks alone. The billionaire also always buys the high ticket item at Nook's Cranny every single day, no matter what it is. That's just how the billionaire rolls. I mean, they're sitting on two million in turnips and they haven't even finished spending last week's bounty. Their house is fully upgraded their debts are paid, and they've got so many bells in the bank that they didn't even notice the interest rate nerf. Being a billionaire is great and all, but it does have its limitations. A true billionaire would never visit a pauper's island, unless their turn to prices are really good. And they probably got a few gray hairs from playing the stock market. Luckily, even if it's Saturday and they still haven't sold their turnips, they know a guy in Australia whose prices are always high. <clears throat> Marley. When you're a billionaire, even the steepest entry fee is a pittance. The billionaire collects cold hard cash, but this next type of player collects, well, everything. The hoarder has enough wood, clay, and stone stockpile to survive the apocalypse and craft a bunch of hot items in the meantime. Need a DIY? They probably got it in their dedicated room for dupe DIY recipes. Just be careful, you'll have to wade through a bunch of tightly packaged furniture to get there. Every day, the hoarder completes their morning ritual. They buy out Nook's cranny, order the max number of items possible from the Nook shopping catalog, and have a pretty woman moment at the Able Sisters shop. The hoarder has so many items that they've even created a second islander so they can have another house and a second inventory to fill. But for the hoarder, quantity is more important than quality. The toilet is right in the middle of their kitchen and they don't even care. It's gotta go somewhere because their inventory is full. Happy Home Academy be damned! Every room is for storage and nothing else. We all have a little bit of hoarder in us, but some players take it even further. Farther. For these poor souls, merely owning an item isn't enough. They need one in every color. I'm talking about the completionist. If that's you, then I'm sorry for yours is a fate worse than death. They hated catching cherry blossom petals, but still crafted multiples of every item, even the wand. And they've still got that thousand yard stare from making all the bunny day DIYs. Seriously, limited time events stress everyone out, but they give the completionist full on migraines. They're always trying to trade Nook Miles items with friends, but no one seems as dedicated as they are to getting Godzilla in every color. There are so many colorways for the public bench that they'll be trolling the forum for months just to find them all. And then there's customization. Oh, customization. The true bane of a completionist's existence. The relatively high price tag on customization kits doesn't help, and even if the completionist also plays the stock market like a billionaire, well, when you buy literally everything you see, it doesn't take long to blow a week's worth of profit. For the completionist, it's more about the thrill of the chase than anything. After they've gotten all the items they can in a day, they shift focus to unlocking all of the Nook achievements. What happens when a completionist finishes their collection? Ha! Fool! A completionist's work is never done. When New Horizons came out, we all had to work our butts off, collecting resources, racking up miles, and slowly, slowly unlocking features. I had to wait like two weeks for the Able Sisters, but when you'd visit one of your friend's islands, it was fully unlocked and meticulously decorated. Like, how? Well, your friend is a time traveler. And let me be clear, that's not a bad thing. You've seen them before, somebody with a perfect town, every fossil in a fully decked out critterpedia, and only like 20 hours in the game or something ridiculous like that. You can play New Horizons however you want, but the time traveler waits for no one. And I don't blame them. I'd fast forward through this pandemic if I could. For them, every trip to Nook's Cranny is a rush of endorphins. Are they finally gonna get that last piece of furniture they've been looking for? Not today, but there's always tomorrow. Just give them a minute to change the system clock on their switch. Some people consider time traveling cheating, but let's be honest. They're just salty that they didn't have the guts to fast forward through all the eggs during the bunny day event. Sorry man, but the time traveler is already celebrating toy day. 
but for the doomsday cult leader, every moment in Animal Crossing is a joyous one. Like, whenever they need to know what time it is, they check their Nook phone instead of their actual phone. Not like they have much of a schedule these days anyways. Quarantine life has hit them hard, and New Horizons is the ultimate escape, so it pretty much dominates their life, and, and that's okay. Within the confines of their island, everything is just as it should be. See that smiling frog over there with an umbrella that looks like a flower? Yeah, he's their best friend now. And they'll do anything to make sure he stays there. I mean, why leave? The island provides. The island provides. Why go to a mystery island when the mother island has a bounty of resources all on her own? Rocks, wood, fish, bugs, and more. The island is an infinite and generous spirit that allows us to freely partake in her natural gifts. At least that's what the Doomsday Call leader thinks. When they're not worshipping at the shrine of the Nook family, they're working to preserve their island's natural beauty. The earth is healing. We're the virus. The Doomsday Cult leader leaves the island as natural as possible. All weeds, no terraforming. Human hubris will lead to our downfall in the real world, but at least in Animal Crossing's New Horizons, we'll be spared. The Doomsday Cult leader may have a strong vision for their island, but the Mean Girl has a strong vision for their islanders. The rules are simple. No birds, no cows, no horses, no pigs, no hippos, and on Wednesdays we wear pink. Look, it's just not your place to judge the mean girl. I think we can all agree that Coach is trash and shouldn't be welcome anywhere. Why is his catchphrase stubble? Coach, stop trying to make stubble happen. It's not gonna happen. The mean girl has forked over a cool 7 million bells to get the exact islanders they want, and those are the best bells they've ever spent. Don't hate the mean girl, hate the game. And you know, you're the second resident of your supposedly remote, uninhabited island when it already has a certain other villager. You got sloppy seconds for picking where your house goes, you can only dig up fossils on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and when you unlocked the terraforming ability, your entire relationship almost fell apart. Why? Because that other villager is your significant other. Let's be honest, whoever named the island is the dominant villager. You wanted to get away to lovely Sunglow Island, but I guess you'll just have to settle for Poop Town. And you may find yourself having uncomfortable conversations when the other villager changes the island tune to something you hate. There have been some painful moments, and you've contemplated buying a price gouge switch, but the good times make it all worth it. Just as long as you take turns. You get double the DIYs, double the money trees, and the shared joy of making a five-star island paradise. If you're able to peacefully coexist with your partner, well, congratulations! You should probably get married now if you're not already. Of course, why bother spending time on your own island when you can do as the island hopper does? Island hop. Maybe they're constantly on the hunt for DIYs, or maybe they're just enjoying the thrill of travel. Either way, the island hopper rarely stays put and is always stocking up on Nook Mile tickets. But like, to actually use them. Every island they visit has the chance of being a scorpion island, and yes, they were devastated when the spawn rate got nerfed. Still, that doesn't dampen the island hopper's adventurous spirit. They leave an open construction plot on their island just to meet tons of villagers during an island getaway to get away from their so-called island getaway. And they always make sure to shake that free piece of furniture out of the tree when they're there. Uh, unless they're on Bamboo Island, then they're screwed. Also, the island hopper is literally the only one who goes to Harv's island. Island. Seriously, the only one. But not every island hopper has a thirst for adventure. Some are just bad visitors. Like, they'll show up to someone's town, hit all the rocks, dig all the fossils, chop all the trees, and won't even have the decency to walk through flowers, let alone water them. They'll just blast right through a field full of black tulips, full sprint, Adrian. At least flowers regrow in New Horizons, but it's still a dick move. Seriously, I had to wait like five minutes of loading screens for that? Sure, you forgot to bring that item I asked for, just like you forgot how to emote and didn't bother saying hi. Whatever, just take my fossils and get out of here. I get it, man. I want fossils too. Gotta fill that museum, right? Well, the trophy hunter already beat me and everyone else to the punch. They don't care how expensive a new fish or bug might look. They're waking Blathers up before they do anything else. They even take the time to listen to Blathers spiel about whatever they're donating. I don't care that you're terrified of bugs blathers, I need you to tell me that tarantulas have barbed belly hair. I mean, who cares about filling your house and your island with useless junk? The only thing the trophy hunter wants is to fill their critterpedia. Their busiest days are the 
first and last of every month. That first day feels like waking up to toy day morning. The trophy hunter can't wait to see what new bugs are under, on, or hiding in the trees. But that last day has them sweating bullets. You know they were up until about 3 in the morning trying to catch string fish. Four specifically, one for Blathers and three for CJ when he decides to show up. Gotta collect all the models too, and yes, they were heartbroken when they got their blue marlin model in the mail and it was smaller than a red snapper. Well, at least I, uh, I mean the trophy hunter has that mounted blue marlin instead. And that thing didn't even cost 100 fish bait and three marlins to make. Yes, the trophy hunter spends a lot of time on fish bait. Digging clams is tedious enough, but crafting bait one at a time? Their A button is so worn out you can't even see the letter on it anymore. Eh, it's all worth it though. How else are you going to farm on the pier? It's not enough to just catch every fish and every bug. The trophy hunter needs to prove that they did it to everyone else. This witch's photo album is full of those first catch snapshots, all branded with a sepia filter of course. Still, nobody has mastered the camera filter like the fashionista. They've got every complete set of clothing and are constantly changing throughout the day just to keep things fresh. And once they get their hands on a wand, the fashionista registers a new outfit for every single occasion. Going fishing? Better put your waders on. Time to build some DIY furniture? Well, make sure you're wearing your welding mask and work apron. And sometimes they just want to dress like a knockoff Power Ranger. Also, forget expanding your pocket space. The fashionista saved up all their early nook miles to get all the new hairstyles and hair colors as soon as they could. Plenty of fashionistas have their own style, but the virtual cosplayer goes even further to make looks their own. They know the ins and outs of the pro design tool and are a bona fide pixel artist in their own right. The Power Ranger knockoff outfit is cool and all, but why bother when you can get in there and make a true Power Ranger outfit yourself? Virtual cosplayers have dressed up like the Tiger King, John luc Picard, and even the main cast of Hunter x Hunter. Of course, if you're an aspiring virtual cosplayer and you're helpless with the pro design tool, you can always look up QR codes online. Tons of other virtual cosplayers are happy to lend you their own custom designs. Designing your character's look is important, but the interior designer is more concerned with how their house looks. But everyone has different tastes. Some interior designers are at the whim of the Happy Home Academy. They'll do whatever it takes to get that gold HHA trophy, even if it means filling a room with ugly but matching furniture. And yes, they proudly display their trophies if only to get more points. Other interior designers are all about creating a house that feels, you know, livable? Like have you seen some of those places on Instagram? Add the right filter and they look like professional grade pictures from a catalog or something. Sure, they're not racking up points from the HHA, but the feng shui in their kitchen is absolutely perfect. Mwah. And all that equipment looks state of the art. On the other hand, you've got interior designers that just totally embrace chaos and do their own thing. I don't care what the HHA says, if I want to put a golden toilet next to a throwback skull radio in my bamboo room. I'ma do it. There's also the rare exterior designer. They just can't seem to be happy with one look for their house. They've tried just about every combination of roofs, siding, and doors, but nothing seems to stick. So they gotta visit resident services and drop another 5,000 bells, hoping this new look will be the one that works for them. One day they'll find that perfect mailbox. One day. Like, why stop on the inside of your house, right? And while you're at it, might as well decorate all your islanders' houses too. That sounds intense, but the utopian takes it a step further. They view their starting island as a blank canvas, a lump of clay waiting to be molded. By sheer force of will and with the aid of some terraforming, the utopian's about to shape this humble island into their ultimate paradise. You can spot a utopian pretty easily. Their paths are all perfectly symmetrical, every room in their house House is themed, and they've even got a customized wardrobe for each of their villagers, which, yes, change seasonally. Utopians have incredible patience that they've honed over countless hours just trying to create a rounded edge on a path, but accidentally erasing the path instead. That's just the price you pay for perfection. The Utopians' absurdly manicured flower beds may give you midsummer vibes, but it's worth it when half of those flowers are lilies of the valley. With all of the summer events, new NPCs, and fresh items coming our way, there's no end to Animal Crossing in sight. And as time goes on, I'm sure we'll meet even more players in Animal Crossing. Who are some of the players you've met? I'm Bob Dunga, and this is the leaderboard where all players are welcome, even if they're birds, dogs, horses, pigs, or hippos.